consider the new field of epigenetics. This is a direct test of whether environmental factors can influence inherited characters in a purposeful way. First, pregnant female rats are exposed to vincozolin, a powerful fungicide. The rat pups grow up showing serious illness and abnormalities. The details aren't important here. When males from this mother mature and are mated to normal female rats that have never been exposed to the fungicide, both male and female pups born to this unexposed mother rat also suffer the same diseases and abnormalities as their father. What's more, when mated with unexposed females, males from this second mating can pass these traits on again, and this can be repeated for yet another generation. Eventually, though, repeated matings of descendant offspring resulted in normal rat, indicating that the effects of the fungicide on the first pregnant female rat, or pups in utero, were reversible. Therefore, these effects of vincozolin could not be traditional mutagenic effects. If vincozolin does not act on the genes of the first generation of sickly rat pups, what then were its effects? The seemingly purposeful passage of acquired phenotypes from one generation of rat pups to another is not based on genetic information in rat DNA, but in some way is imprinted on top of the DNA. This type of inheritance has been named epigenetic, literally meaning above genes. The above the genes changes that occurred in overcalyx residence in the fungicide exposed in utero pups, rat pups, and now in fruit flies and other experimental organisms are changes in the expression of genes caused by chromatin and DNA modifications. These include then the chemical modification of DNA itself. In other words, the progeny rats were inheriting not altered genes, but altered chromatin and therefore altered patterns and timings of gene activation and repression, altered patterns of gene control. Here's just a reminder of how chemical modification of histones, acetylation in this case, causes decondensation of chromatin to its beads on a string or nucleosome structure. This change is reversible. So what has been passed from one generation to the next is not altered genes, but altered controls on gene expression. These were induced in the germline of the pups and persisted until beyond the reproductive maturity of several rat generations. If not reversed, or if stabilized by environmental factors, such chemical modifications to DNA and chromatin proteins are durable and heritable. When they occur in the germline, that is sperm or eggs, they can be passed on and may take multiple generations before they are reversed. So was Lamarck right after all? No, the object of evolution is still your genes, but nurture indeed has a greater role in inheritance than we have thought for a long time. As the saying goes, the sins of the fathers can be visited on the sons, in this case by epigenetic inheritance. Overeating, smoking, and other bad habits will outlast you and may show up as illnesses and premature mortality in your children and grandchildren. As they say, a word to the wise.